Can a child of the kingdom be cast into outer darkness? Well, now, I know there's some denominations that say they can, but most of Christianity understands the security for the believer. And yet we read this in the Bible. I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here we have the children of the kingdom being cast into outer darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, how do the children of the kingdom end up damned? That's pretty amazing. Now, is that confusing or troubling to you? Is it hard to understand? Well, that's because you don't understand the difference between the eight kingdoms. <laughs> You're going to start understanding today, okay? The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are not the same thing. The children of the kingdom that are cast into outer darkness are the children of the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of heaven? We'll see that. There's eight kingdoms found in the Bible. There's a kingdom of God, which most people think that the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are interchangeable terms. They certainly are not. Now, there are times when they merge, when they're functioning together as one, but they're not the same thing. Now, the kingdom of God is invisible. It's within you. The kingdom of heaven is visible. It's a kingdom of the heavens, as in the heavenly bodies, as in the earth and heavens. And then there's Satan's kingdom, where he seeks to rule over the kingdom of heaven. Satan knows he'll never rule over the kingdom of God. But right now he is ruling over the kingdom of heaven. And then there's the Gentile kingdoms. The Gentiles seek to control the kingdoms. That's what it's all about in history. And then there's a kingdom of Israel, which is distinct from the Gentile kingdoms, distinct from the kingdom of heaven, and distinct from the kingdom of God. Then there's Antichrist coming kingdom, which won't go too well for him. And then there's Christ kingdom, which he speaks of in the New Testament. You can look it up. And then finally, there's the Father's kingdom. The Father's kingdom, when in the book of Revelation, all the kingdoms will come together and it will become the Father's kingdom for eternity. Now, the word kingdom appears in the Bible 399 times. When I say the Bible, I'm talking about the Bible preserved in the English language, the most up-to-date, accurate to the true original, and that is the King James Bible. It appears 399 times. Now, in the New Testament, it appears 163 times, and that's divided up into the kingdom of God 70 times and the kingdom of heaven 30 times three times. That's interesting number. Uh, look at my series on numbers 70. Now, Matthew 6 says, after this manner, therefore pray ye our father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Now, what kingdom is that? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So when heaven rules over the earth, that's the kingdom of heaven. When the will of God is done on the earth as it is in heaven. That's the kingdom of heaven come. Jesus came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. After John the Baptist was killed, he started preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven was rejected by the Jews. And so God preached the kingdom of God, which is encompassing Gentiles as well as Jews. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven belongs to Adam first, to the human race, and ultimately to Jesus Christ. Power and glory forever. Now, the Bible is a kingdom book, first, middle, and last, all the way through. That's, that's the one single uniting theme of every book in the Bible is the kingdom coming to the earth. God ruling and reigning over the kingdoms of men over what is now Satan's kingdom. So again, we have the kingdom of God, Satan's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the Gentile kingdoms, kingdom of Israel, Antichrist kingdom, and Christ kingdom. You see, I looked up every single time the word kingdom appears in the Bible 
read all the passages hundreds of times, and correlated them, and looked at the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, Satan's kingdom, earth's kingdom, Israel's kingdom, and it was an amazing experience. It I actually did that over a 30-year period. And then the Father's kingdom, finally. Now, God is creator. The heavens were created. God's eternal. The heavens are temporal. So the kingdom of God, the Bible says, is within you. But the kingdom, of, and he says it does not come with observation. But the kingdom of heaven is without you and does come with observation. God is omnipotent. The heavens are a place in time. So the kingdom of heaven can be ruled by Satan or by Caesar or by Joe Biden. So the kingdom of heaven is a physical, visible place, time and kingdom. The kingdom of God is spirit and truth. The kingdom of God is the dominion of God over all creation. It exists as long as God exists. There'll never be a time when it's not. And no one will ever lay their hands on it. No one ever has. No one ever will. As God sits on the throne, that's his kingdom. As he rules over the universe, that's God's kingdom. Everything in the universe, heaven or hell, is part of God's kingdom. And no one location or dispensation is the kingdom of God. It's all encompassing. It's unassailable, incorruptible, indissolvable. It has no earthly prelate. It's not an institution. It's not the church. Power and glory, righteousness, peace and joy is what the kingdom of heaven is. It's within you, spiritual, righteous in nature. And flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now, <laughs> I'm not cherry picking. The, that is what the Bible teaches. I got this giant book written that makes all that quite clear. The kingdom of heaven is created in time and space. It's physical, vulnerable, nothing religious or spiritual about it. Ideally, it is the rule of heaven over the earth. It can be ruled by anyone at any time, any place, any way. And that's what the history of man is all about. Now, here's a comparison side by side. The kingdom of God is linked to the invisible. The kingdom of heaven is visible heavens. The kingdom of God is allotted to mankind only. The kingdom of heaven includes angels and spirits. The kingdom of God is eternal. The kingdom of heaven had a beginning. The kingdom of God is unassailable. The kingdom of heaven can be taken by force. Do you remember when he said, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. There's no way violent people could take the kingdom of God. But when you see people in the streets burning and killing, they're attempting to take the kingdom of heaven away from the people of God, away from Satan, away from another group of people. It's all about a struggle for the kingdom. Kingdom of God, God opens the door. In the kingdom of heaven, man can shut the door to the kingdom of heaven. Contains only the righteous. The kingdom of heaven contains sinners and Satan. The kingdom of God is personal and individual. The kingdom of heaven is corporate and institutional. Now that's just a little bit of the comparisons. All history is a struggle to possess the kingdom of heaven. Any history you read, that, that is the theme of all history books. The struggle to possess the kingdom of heaven. Do you believe God's kingdom can be conquered by force or violence? We talked about that. Look at it. And from the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. You see, John had his head cut off. He came preaching, but repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He didn't preach repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, just the kingdom of heaven. And they cut his head off and took the kingdom. It suffered violence. John 3, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Kingdom of heaven can be seen. The kingdom of God will be seen in heaven when we go before the throne, not until then. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb be born? Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, 
Except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God gets in by new birth. So do you believe you enter heaven by doing the will of God? If you don't understand the kingdoms, you'd think so by reading the Bible. For it says, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, cast into the fire. Wherefore, by the fruit ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Who will enter the kingdom of heaven? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So is that salvation by works? It would be if it spoke of the kingdom of God. It would say you get to heaven by doing the will of the Father. So you better go out and start doing it. But no, this is about the kingdom of heaven. That's how you get in the kingdom of heaven when Jesus comes and takes it over during the millennium. That's what you'll see during the millennial reign of Christ is the kingdom of heaven. All right. Do you believe some will be removed from the kingdom of God and cast into the fire? Removed from the kingdom of God? Look what scripture says. The son of man shall send forth his angels. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. That's coming out of the kingdom. People in a kingdom are taken out and they shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father. A different kingdom. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Do you have the ears to hear the fact that the the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are not the same thing. Uh, so then learn the difference between the eight kingdoms. Now, this, this book is easy to read, and it's laid out in forms where you've got parallel passages <coughs> showing the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven side by side with explanation. Every time the word kingdom appears in the Bible is addressed in this book. So it's, it's a study book. It's not, uh, it's not an inspirational reading unless you just love truth. And then I've had people, I had an Afri African pastor write me and said he didn't understand the Bible until he read this, and it transformed his ministry. So one more slide here. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. So that's when the kingdoms of heaven ruled by men and Satan the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And that's when the kingdom of the Father uh, wraps it all up. So this, is, this has been, I have actually, I have about 10 hours of this on tape. If you want to go back and look, I think it's online, it's free. Uh, but this is just an abbreviation of the first hour of messages I previously gave. And I do not make any money off this book. I don't get any royalties. I don't make anything off the sale of it. I do this simply so you will have the truth at your disposal. You see, I, I'm independently poor, so I don't need any money. <laughs> All right, see you next time. <laughs>